thank you thank you dr jasuja uh, for the opportunity and thank you astra so topic is real world evidence of osimertinib as standard of care in the management of egfr mutated nsclc as we have seen uh, egfr mutations and their targets have changed the whole uh, perspective in terms of the treatment of lung cancer where we had only a chemotherapy options or first generation and then sec then come first generation molecules second generation molecules which uh, paved the way for further assessment and then again the molecular tumor board we are dis we are discussing in the morning so it is osimertinib with third line third generation egfr tki which has demonstrated clinically meaningful pfs of 18.9 months and os of 38.6 months in landmark trial which is like known as flora by dr suresh ramalingam it has compared head to head uh, trial of osimertinib with first and second generation tkis the schema was like inclusion criteria were more than 18 years of a patient of locally advanced or metastatic nsclc with ps01 exon 9 deletion or l858 r rotation no prior systemic anti cancer treatment and stable cns mates were allowed stratification done based on the mutation status and it was like osimertinib versus comparator arm was gefitinib or erlotinib <laughs> os was also a key secondary endpoint baseline characteristics as we can see uh, it were quite well matched most of the patients elderly 60 plus asian uh, patients were also nearly 60% smoking status nearly 65 or uh, 2/3 patients were non smoker even in most of the subsequent study what we find these are in the range of similar range cnets mates at the study entry were in nearly 20% patients 20 so what were the results the primary analysis of this flora trial shown the pfs of 18.9 months as compared to the comparator arm egfr tki of 10.2 months with hazard ratio of 0.6 in almost all the subgroups which included cns met at the study performance status egfr mutation at the randomization apart from sex age and race the os analysis again 38.6 months versus 31.8 months with hazard ratio of 0.79 so to conclude it had the final os analysis of flora reinforces osimertinib as the standard of care for first line treatment of patients with egfr mutated advanced nsclc and this has been included in nccn guidelines for the patients and it is a preferred category osimertinib we can see it has been a preferred category in patients who are driven with the egfr mutation in all the setting so the real problems come with the what is the real world evidence of osimertinib so to address this uh, i'll be discussing three main trials flower study oc fact and myconos so to coming with the flower study as we have seen the benefit of osimertinib in the clinical trial how much uh, the question is how many patients are actually true representative of the flora trial so as per the estimates there are only these clinical trial eligibility criteria fit into only 2 to 4% of patients with cancer which who are receiving treatment in the rcts so we need to generate the real world data which actually are meaningful in terms of uh, clinical practice so flower study had mainly <clears throat> similar inclusion criteria main whatever we see in the clinical practice age more than 18 years histologically confirmed nsclc with egfr mutated exon 1821 locally advanced stage 3b and 4 and patients were eligible for first line treatment only patient excluded were who the patients who had already taken osimertinib in clinical trials so primary endpoints were mean ttd which time to discontinue time to treatment discontinuation and secondary endpoints were as that of clinical trial os pfs overall rate so what was the different in this real world data 
patients with the poor ps patients with comorbidities rare egfr mutation active brain mets were included which were excluded in the flora trial and this is what we encounter in day to day practice so outcomes were similar to the published data adding the consistency of osimertinib efficacy there was no difference in pfs ttd and os noted in the elderly patients so if we look into the results time to treatment discontinuation was around 25.3 months so the, it, it is not wise to compare with the flora trial it was like if we median pfs was 20 months but just to have the uh, effect what is the effect in the real world and then time to discontinuation without patients with without symptoms asymptomatic patients it was not reached as compared with patient symptoms with symptoms were 18.8 months the patients who have more than three sites metastatic site less than three sites and more than three sites we if we compare the time to discontinuation again median not reached and patients with more than three sites median was 21.4 months so if you can look into the insights the patients who are asymptomatic patients who have low tumor burden will have the better results that is what the ttd time to treatment discontinuation was longer 25 25.3 months uh, than the post progression outcome analysis of flora 20.8 months it may be probably due to uh, study population unfit for further therapy or different therapy for oligoprogressive disease so poor treatment outcomes for patients with the brain mets presence of symptoms and more than three metastatic site that is what we had discussed these are the negative prognostic factors that is what we are highlighting coming to the results overall response rates if we see, see there were hardly any cr no cr other pr and stable disease nearly 95% patient had pr and stable disease 4% patient had progressive disease so this is also depicting the similar patients with asym a, a patient asymptomatic patients and no brain met will have a better pfs so in multivariate anal analysis the longer pfs was noted in the absence of brain mets asymptomatic patient and ttd of 9 months or higher so what happened with the patients who have progressed so nearly for 21 cases underwent re biopsy at progression tissue biopsy in 14 cases and six patients with the liquid biopsy and the molecular analysis uh, were performed in 13 samples 61.9% so what we found in the real world data there will druggable resistance mechanism included met amplification met amplification and egfr amplification egfr amplification her2 amplification so probably these are the outliers which we can go with like as uh ulla sir has shown patiala panel and we have such patients concomitant to uh, earlier investig uh, earlier reports so these are the outliers probably we, those who will not respond and have a progression coming to the safety and data conclusion like pneumonitis is much more common common the commonest rather stomatitis rash dry skin and paronychia are the common adverse event along with the venous thromboembolism so venous thromboembolism was looked into it, it was the most common and which was reported only in 2% of patients which found around 8% of this patients in this study so there were actually no difference in the rates of vt was reported according to the age comorbidity and tumor load so no difference in survival outcome was also observed to the age comorbidity and type of eg for mutation so in conclusion osimertinib its effectiveness and safety was also confirmed in the real world scenario the other real world study was osifact which was again it was investigated in the efficacy of the patient background and the safety of the first line treatment in the real world scenario it included advanced egfr mutated nsclc excluded patients who are post operative adjunct chemotherapy or receiving osimertinib as second line chemotherapy patient characteristic were similar to the clinical uh, like flora trial where 
more than two third patients were less than 75 years age it's common in females performance status ps01 non smokers common in smokers the interesting point in this uh, where like pdl1 also, also, also assessed and nearly more than 50% patient had 11.9 pdl1 study endpoints mainly pfs and os uh, pfs for the primary and secondary os secondary endpoint was os so pfs event occurred in nearly 182 patients and median pfs was 20.5 months so par parameters which were significantly associated with the pf poor pfs was like male gender malignant effusions liver metastasis and advanced unresectable cases and with respect to pdl1 expression median pfs was not reached in patients with tps 1% 14.7 months with tps 49% 11.1 months tps 50% so if the pdl1 is higher the pfs is probably lower so these are the features where clinical features where we can correlate or expect patients to behave in a bad manner so what were the reasons for treatment discontinuation the most common was being the disease progression nearly 44% patient had disease progression nearly 25.6% patient had a pneumonitis the commonest side effect found in this study and other reasons were like anorexia skin disorders cardiac failure qt was considered 16% of them so coming to the pneumonitis nearly 12.8% had all grades grade 3 and grade 4 nearly 4.5 to 5% and the median onset of duration of the onset of this pneumonitis was nearly 56 days 2 months we can say and it is correlated with the non hematological toxicities as well so to conclude this osifact study pfs after first line osimertinib treatment in real world practice was favorable and discontinuation rate of uh, due to adverse events were nearly 18.8% especially pneumonitis which require further investigations and the last study uh, micnor which is like real world study of the patients with egfr mutated locally advanced metastatic nsclc treated with so this study uh, evaluates the clinical characteristics of real world time to next treatment or death or time to treatment discontinuation So this is a global observational prospective cohort study run in USA, Europe, and Asia. Sub analysis mainly it's an electronic database. It is evaluate it is evaluating nearly electronic database. This re, these results are mainly from 280 US cancer clinics and interim sub analysis data were collected till June 30, 2020. And study is expected to complete till June 2030, 2023. so most of the patients like more than 18 years is advanced nsclc egfr mutated documented prior to initiation of first line osimertinib were included this is the study schema how the included and they are expecting to finish it by 2023 so uh, again the age we see more than 65 patient nearly two third patients more than 65 female preponderance as we know interesting point in this study is like stage 1 to 3a patient nearly 16% patients are in this uh, subgroup stage 1 to 3a uh, we need to in our analysis uh, we to see the in a, in a final analysis till the study completes which is not available currently adeno was 90% 97% patients had adeno carcinoma charles and comorbid index like 01 in most of the patients <laughs> so if you look at the the commonest eg for mutation again as we know eg exon 19 relation 50% and l85 nearly 33% so is the both of these are the commonest and the treatment sequencing in the interim analysis we found out like this study found out nearly 58% patient remained on the first line nearly uh, 160% we can say and uh, 20% patient received second line treatment including pdl1 mono immuno onco combinations or in combination with the egfr tki and chemo based and nearly 18.4% died while on first line treatment 
So real world time to next treatment or death, median follow-up was 9.6 months and median WTT and TD was 17.9 months. There were 204 events out of which 18.4 died and 18.8 switched to second line. So in multivariate analysis, the following variables were significantly associated with the RWTT and TD. So stage at the initial diagnosis, smoking status, Charles and Comoro index more than three, EGFR mutation, number of metastatic sites more than four. So median real world time to treatment discontinuation was around 17.2 months. Again, similar to what we see, not very similar, but can match to the FLORA trial. The, it had like nearly 230 events, out of which 18.4 died, 18.8 switched to second line, and 4.7 discontinued. What were the clinical factors which affected this outcome? Were Charlson comorbid index more than three, ECOG PS more than two, EGFR mutation type, number of metastasis site more than four, and evidence of liver metastasis. So all these factors probably may not do favorably in real world setting. So take home message from these studies is like these are the interim RWTT NTD and RWTTD results support the effectiveness of osimertrib in this real world evaluation. Longer term outcomes will be validated in the final analysis even with the subset. It would be interesting to see stage one to three uh, patients who received osimertinib what were the results in the real world setting. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Dr. Manoj, for this talk.